friends, neighbors, and of course, the ever popular and oft underappreciated YouTube comment section. Good morning. I am hanging out at my kitchen table this morning with a cup of coffee waiting for roofers to show up to my house. And I figured I would make a quick video just to defend my good name after getting roasted in the comment section for my sub EQs. So to just give you some insight into the mad, mad brain of Billy, here's what's going on. This is a DBX Venue 360 system processor. Uh, this is a box that I carried with me for a long time. However, I found that separating my outputs in the M32 over matrices can basically give me everything that this box can do. So what you're looking at right now is a configuration for stereo subs and stereo mains. So this is left and right sub, left and right main, okay? They're represented in two different colors here. So if I want to bring my mains in, this is purple. If I want to bring my subs in, this is a shade of red, depending on how you want to view it in the camera. Sorry, Fred the cat has now entered the conversation on the kitchen table. Um, so let's look at our sub EQ. Within the DBX software, we have a filter type here. There's a high pass filter and a low pass filter. And right now I have them set up in my favorite filter which is the Linkwitz Riley 48 dB per octave. This is about the steepest slope that you can get in a, in a, in a system. I like to EQ my subs with Linkwitz Riley. I like the way this filter sounds. I want very narrow bands of things going to my speakers. I think that oftentimes problematic audio comes from subwoofers. Either there's too much sub because of an you know, overzealous engineer who focuses on the kick and bass, or the sub deployment is such that you're finding resonant frequencies in the room and they're accentuating those things. And third, you're sending too much high frequency information to the subs. Sending too much high frequency information to subwoofers is a bugaboo of mine. I like my subwoofers to sit right around 80 and be basically a ray of death between 50 hertz and about 80 hertz. And I want the main hangs of the PA to handle a great deal of the full range frequency. I know you think I'm crazy, but this makes for a very, very tight PA system when the subwoofers are handling a lot of low frequency. Now, the way that I EQ things is I like to, I don't really love the way 100 hertz sounds. I like sub 100 hertz and plus 100 hertz. So if you're looking at a bass guitar, which generally lives around 100, we're talking about rack toms, that kind of thing. I'm oftentimes cutting that frequency out anyway because it is just sort of that borderline low mid sub frequency that I just, I don't really love. Now, oftentimes, subwoofers will come in with built-in crossovers, and you have a choice oftentimes between 100 and 80. Now, back in the day when amplifiers weren't as efficient, you would have to choose a higher subwoofer crossover point because it's much easier on amplifiers to deal with higher frequencies versus the low, low, low frequencies in the 50 to 60 hertz range. I get it. I understand that. We're not living in those times. I would like my subwoofers to hit right around 75 and live in there. Now, it's not a linear frequency like this. You can look at the slope and see that even at a 48 dB per octave, it's, it's a gentle slope. So at the nastiest, most aggressive frequency we have here, there are still elements of up to about 250 with a low pass frequency of 103 hertz in my signal. So if I bring this down to what I was just preaching about, saying I like it around 75 or so, we're still at the tail end of this frequency seeing 200 hertz in this signal. 
It's very faint. It's at the very end of the, of the slope. However, it's still there. 80 to 100 is still there, even though I really want this right here, okay? This is with the 48 dB per octave curve. If we increase this to a Butterworth 24 dB per octave curve, which is what is on the X32, M32, you can see that our subwoofer frequency goes up to about 600 hertz. That is garbage frequency in a subwoofer. That's not only in the, the, the low frequency to the low mid frequency, you're starting to get into the mid range frequency with that. So when we look at the dreaded, awful, Billy subwoofer EQ, here's what's going on. This blue that you're seeing here is the low pass. This is our Butterworth 24 dB per octave curve, okay? So what I will do is use my ears, bring this in until it sounds good, which if we're looking at this, that's making our crossover point at about 75. And then this is our this is our slope. So this is essentially mirroring this. Now, you may be asking yourself what's going on in here. Every thing on earth has a resonant frequency, okay? There are certain subwoofers that when you start to listen to them will have a, a frequency that the box itself resonates in or the speaker itself will get a little farty for lack of a more eloquent term. These notches take that out. My number four point right here is generally looking for where the subwoofers are unhappy. My five point right here will oftentimes just accentuate the curve, the actual crossover slope. So when you see this, perhaps I want a cut at 100 because there's still not the tight subwoofer frequency that I'm looking at with this particular EQ that is built in on this console. Again, I like to use my ears. The way that I deploy the PA system is not with smart. It probably should be, but I just find that I'm used to the way that I mix, and if I can get my subs behaving, the rest of the mix is much easier for me to dial in. So if you've ever worked with me or you've seen any of my videos, the first thing that I do is listen to the subs in solo. And once the subs are tight, I move on to the rest of the PA. So this big wall of blue here is not a bunch of EQ points with huge wide widths on them. This is a low pass filter. So if we're dealing with a PA system that I'm working with the system tech, and I want my subs, you know, in infra, very low frequency mode, that's cool. A lot of engineers don't like that. I happen to like the way that that sub sounds with the PA hangs being more open frequency, more full range. Again, we all do it different. Um, I've yet to see two people's show files be exactly the same, but I just thought that this may shed some light onto the reason why you are seeing what you do or what you are. The other thing is you're looking at the graphical representation of how Midas presents this EQ curve. This is by no means a laboratory grade representation of the sound. You have to go with your ears. If you're a confident engineer, you know where in your mix, there's going to be problems when you dial the PA and you just do, um, you know, and, and for those of you who are, are commenting on this particular EQ curve and who are probably dying inside, um, you know, if we had a system engineer or we had a uh, system processor, I might not need to go this hard on my sub matrix. It might be dialed in, but sometimes it might not be. And the other thing is, as working sound engineers, we have to deal with a lot. So if you're mixing, say, a wedding band that has two 15 cabinets on sticks with subs and 
the father of the bride wants to give a speech standing right in front of the speaker, you can only move that guy so much before he wanders right back there before the feedback genie is released from the PA. So when you deploy a system in that way, you need to keep those things in mind. If the lead singer wants to point the mic at the crowd, you have to be ready for that. And sometimes those beautiful flat EQ curves over a whole system don't really allow for extracurricular activities that might not be uh, in the best sound practices um, to, uh, to take place. So anyway, I'm sure you guys are going to roast me for this too. But again, I, I just want to, to point out that I, I don't do these things willy-nilly. There is logic and reason behind these decisions that, that I'm making. Uh, I, I have been mixing bands for over half of my life at this point. Um, right or wrong to some of you, it's, it's just the way that I like to work. And uh, more often than not, it uh, ha- has led me to, to more gigs. So anyway, if any of this helps you or if this sparks debate, I'm, I'm certainly all about uh, discourse in the, uh, in the chat section. Uh, whether I agree with you or not, um, if, if you say something intelligent, I, I will always take that uh, as a learning experience. You know, there are a lot of you out there that are really doing this uh, on a very high level, and I appreciate that. And, and, you know, a lot of things I do learn from the comments section. So I don't want you to think that this is just Monday morning grumpy Billy coming at you. Um, but I, I, again, I just wanted to, to show out ju- or just show off just kind of where my brain is at for making a lot of these decisions. Anyway, have a great day. Have a great rest of the week. Um, and I'll uh, catch you on the next one. See you.